nobody understands the the what caused Christianity to come about because we the religious scholars who write about it are all coming from mostly from a religious standpoint. Yes. But there's another way of looking at it entirely. Like people think that some malignant force caused the destruction of the Roman Empire. You know what caused it? The sun caused the destruction of the Roman Empire. The sun? And how is how did this happen? Well, from about 500 BC to 100 AD, there was something in the Mediterranean basin known as the Roman climate optimum. That is to say, the climate of the Mediterranean basin was ideal for the growing of crops and the seasons were very regular. The result of this is the Roman Empire comes about, its population grows enormously, they build roads, they have sea lanes, they have a number of large cities, including mainly Rome, but others that require very substantial food services uh, uh, and, and in, in a world where the transportation of foodstuffs is very challenging. So this is where we are in 100 AD when, as we know from uh, stalagmite or stalagmites that are been, have been measured in a cave in Scotland, the solar output increased slightly. Mm -hmm. and, and it does that every once in a while. Right. It increases some and decreases some. Right. And uh, when that happened, the Mediterranean basin went into a protracted state of drought. And all of a sudden, all of these people couldn't get food. The result is their immune systems become stressed because they are mal malnourished. We then have the first great Roman plague because these people, they have no germ theory. They have compromised immune systems because they're malnourished because of the solar activity, the change in solar output. They're moving around the area as they did not certainly before even 1 AD. I mean, they're really, it's really a going concern at that point. Mm -hmm. The first plague occurs, the Aurelian plague, the plague at the time of Marcus Aurelius, yeah. which causes such disruption and dis depopulation that at one point he's got to sell the furniture and the contents of the imperial palace in Rome in order to keep the country's army paid. Mm -hmm. So it's a big upset. Now, this is a world in which the religion and the and the state are not just it's not just church and state they're the same thing uh if you if you are a roman the roman gods are rome they are rome jupiter and venus and all of the different roman gods mars they are rome they are the personification of your state and your state and your gods are essentially the same. So everyone, of course, runs to places like the temples of Asclepius, the healer, to get healed. Now, in those days, you did not, uh, when you did the sacrifice, it had to hurt. You didn't just go in and, you know, throw a couple of coins in. You went in and you took a bullock or you took something of value to yourself, something that would be a significant sacrifice, and you gave it to the God. And in return, the God was supposed to help you, mm -hmm. to heal you. Mm -hmm. Plague after plague came, and the gods didn't help them. About 300 AD, there hasn't been a plague for a while, but the relationship between the people and the gods has deteriorated to the point that the temples are now starving. No one bothers. They, they don't hate them yet. They're starting to, but they don't hate them yet. And they, uh, they uh, st are stopping sacrifice. Constantine, who was a political genius, realizes this problem and sees that the, that the social fabric is deteri of the empire is declining. There's crime, there's inflation, there's all kinds of problems. He also sees that his mother is a member of a one little cult called the Christians, 
who believed that this Jewish rabbi from from Jerusalem is a, it was 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 a special representative of God, and they have something called the didache, which is a rule of life that has enabled them to remain intact through all the plagues because they have this tight social unit that takes in the orphans and that that they have the parabenari who go out and help the people who are sick, even at risk of their own lives. In other words, it's a very powerful social organization and it's intact. And he brings that into the Roman Empire and announces that Christianity is the new religion of the Roman Empire, but he does it this way. The, he and he moves the birthplace of Jesus, which was probably Nazareth, to Bethlehem, and places him in a cave. The birthplace in a cave that was traditionally the cave where Venus gave birth to Adonis. In other words, he replaces Venus and Ad- the Venus and Adonis story with the story of the Holy Family, and Jesus. Ad- takes on the trappings of a Roman god, essentially a sun god. Mm -hmm. He replaces Adonis as, I am the way, the truth, and the light, Mm -hmm. and becomes Christianity. Now, this is good, and it's bad. It's good because it preserves the teachings of Jesus, at least some of them. It's bad because the plagues continue, and because of the plagues continuing, the Christian parts of the empire become venomously angry at the at the at the gods they because in those days the gods were the statues the statue of apollo in the temple of apollo was the god mm-hmm. and they were specially treated so that the spirit of the god could come into the statue it was all all very oh, now so the people start to destroy the gods. They tear down the temples. They break the statues. That's why all those statues from there have broken noses and no arms broken off because they were being beaten with hammers because the people were trying to kill the gods because they had decided this. these plagues were so bad that, for example, at one point, Constantinople was so depopulated, the emperor had to send the army out into the, into the hinterlands to force people to repopulate the city. Mm. I mean, it was horrendous. It, it was un, unimaginable. It makes COVID look like a picnic. And... The, uh, through all of this, gradually, the entire old religion is destroyed. Uh, there are a number of libraries that are destroyed. The one that we always think about, of course, is the Library at Alexandria, which which went slowly over a period of time. The 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 the, the killing of Hypatia was the really the that's what we should remember is the worst thing that happened there because the the destruction of the library was not an intentional burning in one go. Mm. It was a gradual decline in interest and activity and a series of fires, some of which were probably set. And uh, uh, so we lost a lot. We lost a lot. And it, the fact that the Antikythera device is so sophisticated mm. it, it, and we have no idea and we have no record of it. No one wrote anything about it. We didn't even know what it was Done, built for until recently. That's because those records were all destroyed. I'm sure in the destruction of the of the knowledge of the of the classical world, and but the knowledge of the classical world was destroyed because people thought that those gods had turned against them, and they they demonized their own gods. 